Good morning. We are back in Connie's kitchen up here at Treetop Lodge. The holidays were crazy busy, which is great. Um, and we've had a lot of weather, so I kind of had delays being able to be up here. I got my hair done again. Amy's doing a wonderful job. Not only does it look great, it looks healthy. And it's so relaxing, the process. And <laughs> I kind of doze off when she's working on it. It's kind of been, always been my weak point. Wash my hair, brush my hair. I'm yours. But it's been really nice. And, and I tell you, if you want a really good experience getting your hair done and getting your various services, go see Amy at uh, Studio 113. She does a wonderful job. And it's a great place. And last time, there were even two little puppies visiting. Well, they're older, but I call them puppies. But that was fun. All right, so today we're dealing with cold weather and such. So I'm going to make one of my favorites, which is a cheeseburger pie. Super, super easy recipe. I'm going to start with, get some, about a pound of ground beef browning here. And then I'll tell you a little bit about my pie history. All right. So I'm going to get this broken up. And I'm just going to season a little bit of salt and pepper. The stuff I put into the, to the pie itself will have a lot of flavor. And you know, I don't do a lot of salt stuff anyway. So I want to get it started broken up. Now the thing about ground beef, I don't want to stand here while it's still this way and break it all up completely because it'll break down too much and then you get a really funky consistency. And I don't want that. So I'll just get some salt and pepper, a little bit of granulated garlic in there and I'm going to throw that on the heat and let it start browning. And as it starts to brown and break down by itself a bit, then I'll break it down a bit more. So. Put it back there where I can listen to it. Now I cannot take credit for this recipe because it came directly from Bisquick many years ago and it's I, I started out making it you know using their suggested ingredients and such the first time and then I played with it since. In order to make the batter it's just a cup of milk, two eggs and I always like to get my wet stuff in first and get that blended up then just a half a cup of the mix. And I like to make my batter up first while I'm preparing my other ingredients because I have found, and I don't know if this is true of all mixes like this, but if you mix it up and let it sit and then mix it again just before you use it, it seems to, to aerate it more. You get a fluffier consistency. So that's what I like to do. that out of the way. Mm. Big box. So I'm just going to get this thoroughly mixed and a whisk is ideal for this because it really lets stuff circulate. Go both ways and I just keep mixing until I don't see any more lumps. Then I'm just going to, like I said, set it aside. It'll be the last thing I add to our pie. And then I'll start dicing an onion because isn't that something you all love to see me do. Now, I, I laughed when I said pie. Years ago, Larissa was really young. Um, I wanted to bake a pie. It was strawberry season. So I did every, well, first of all, I didn't make a crust. I'll tell you about that in a minute. I did buy a frozen crust. But to make the, um, the filling, I did everything just the way I thought you, you were supposed to. But to this day, what I served that day is known as strawberry soup. I don't know what I did wrong, and then I never attempted another pie. And I mean, I've never claimed to be a big baker anyway, but that's still referred to as strawberry pie. I don't even, I think my dad was game. He tried to eat it, but it didn't taste bad. It just certainly didn't have the presence of a pie. So then fast forward a few years. Oh, let me give this a break here. See, it's starting to break down a bit. This is pretty lean, but I'm still going to drain it before I use it. Yeah, starting to get some brown on there. Like I said, I don't want this to be... I'll get that later. I don't want this to be a crumbly consistency. So I'm just going to let it cook and break it down a bit as it goes. So I still want to have some, some bite when you bite into it. So then, 
fast forward a few years, and Chris's dear grandmother and I were talking, and I was talking about how when I was a kid, my mom and my grandmother made these fabulous apple pies with a scratch crust with, I'm guessing, lard. But they were so light and flaky. My mom would make the apple pie, and as it would bake, it would dome up. So when you cut into it, you had like that much space between the top crust and the apples. And it was wonderful. And I said, I always wish I'd paid attention and learned how to do that, because of course they never wrote it down. So Grandma says, I can teach you how to do that. Oh, because this is something I just, I tried from recipes. I really needed to work with somebody who knew what they were doing. So one Saturday, Larissa and I got set and drove down to Grandma's house in East Point, and we were so excited. So we start prepping the apples and such, and I was familiar with that process. I was, oh man, I, I wanted to get to that crust. So she reaches into the freezer and pulls out a frozen crust. Not one she'd made and frozen, but one she'd bought frozen. And I'm staring at it. She said, what's wrong? And I said, well, Grandma, the, kind of the whole idea here was you were going to teach me how to make a crust. She goes, oh, that's just too much trouble. So we ended up making a decent pie. The filling was good. But I still don't know how to make that scratch crust. So if anybody out there knows how to make a good scratch crust, the old-fashioned kind, and you want to come up here and show me, I would really appreciate it. And then I could make that apple pie, and I might even be able to make the strawberry pie. But then I have to figure out how to make the strawberry filling, and not soup. But anyway, so that's basically my pie history. So when I ran across this, it's like it just gave me a whole new way to do things. I haven't done this in a savory application yet. I mean a sweet application. I've done it more as a main course. So quiche plate or pie plate, a little bit of spray. Get that ready. I've got my oven preheated to 400. Because really the only thing that's going to cook once it goes in the oven is the, uh, the crust, the batter itself. Everything else is for all intents and purposes done. So this is almost ready. Then I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to let it sit and drain a bit. And then we'll be able to start assembling. So Christmas was good here at the lodge. It was quiet. Um, we were busy up until about a week or two before. And then it got quiet, which gave me a little bit of a break. So that was nice. Because I've been busy at the studio. And then, of course, the holidays just keep you busy. But I'm not complaining. Um, as you all probably have heard by now, Dean Rondi, Oxford Wine and Beverage, has closed his doors permanently, which is not a sad thing. He and Maureen made this decision. They wanted to do other things, have more time for family. He was there for 14 years. But Dean is, and always will be, a certified sommelier. He will still be doing the wine dinners up here at the lodge. Yay! Because frankly, without Dean, I wouldn't be able to do it. I don't think I'd want to. So our next one is scheduled for February 11th. That's our big Valentine dinner, where we... Well, the last couple years, that's our most popular dinner. So we have expanded the dining room. So that's $65 per person and seven course and apps and wines and all that. Call me, 248-933-4579 on that or any other events. So I'm going to finish up the beef, and when we get back, we'll start assembling our pie. A recent report found that enough opioids were prescribed in 2016 for every man, woman, and child in the nation to have 36 pills each. But these prescription painkillers are not our only option for treating pain, especially after surgery. The devastating impact of opioid addiction does not discriminate against age, race, or economic status. It's important that we encourage patients to talk to their doctors about non-opioid options to manage their post-surgical pain. Visit planagainstpain.com. Earth Hour, a grassroots movement born in Sydney in 2007, has seen 10,400 landmarks, over 7,000 cities in 172 countries and territories switch off for climate action. Together, individuals and communities have built a people-powered global movement to create real change, lighting up homes and lives with solar power in India and the Philippines, providing families with fuel-efficient stoves in Nepal and Madagascar, and helping communities get back on their feet after Typhoon Haiyan with climate smart boats. We have successfully banned plastic in the World Heritage Site of the Galapagos Islands and planted the world's first Earth Hour forest in Uganda, a country losing thousands of hectares to deforestation every month. 
Together, we've made a lasting difference, but we must continue to protect our planet, our home. This Earth Hour, join us to shine a light on climate action. Together, let's change climate change. It's not just a donation. It's a warm blanket. It's a bottle of clean water. It's a roof and a bed. It's knowing someone cares. It's feeling safe. You said today that's better than yesterday. Every dollar you can spare helps so much more than you can imagine. Please donate now to Red Cross Disaster Relief. Your help is urgently needed. And we're back. And my the meat is nicely browned. You can see it's it's lean. I didn't I got I didn't do it on purpose, but I did get lean beef, which is great. But still, I'm not going to just pour it out. I'm going to set it out here and let it rest a little bit. Smells good, good and beefy. Good and beefy. Yeah, I made one of these last week, and oh, I now know how to use my silly new phone to take pictures and to post them to Facebook. <laughs> People laugh, but to me that's a huge accomplishment. So I made, made this last week at home and I took a picture and posted it and I got some great comments. But I think the best one was, cheeseburger pie, me want. So yes, Jack, I owe you a cheeseburger pie. I saw him last night and he said, did you bring my pie? And I said, no, been working all day, working all night. But that's a really fun reaction, and it's delicious. And like I said, I use this in all different applications. I don't do just cheeseburger. And I call it that because I'm going to put ketchup and mustard and relish and onions and olives and things that you would expect, expect to find in a cheeseburger. And cheese, of course, in the pie. I've done this with... Um, like I'll take asparagus and cut it down and steam it slightly and use that as the filling. Uh, I did a great one with onions. I used like four different kinds of onions and I sauteed them all a little differently then mixed them and mixed the cheese and again just the crust over the top and then bake it. <clears throat> it's kind of like making a quiche. It's quick, it's easy, but it's so delicious. And especially with colder weather, of course we're having, right now we're filming on this freaky day where it's going to go into the 50s. But I have a feeling by the weekend, we'll be back to Michigan winter. But so this is, this is that kind of thing. It's also great, make it with a soup and a salad for lunch. Uh, make it up, stick it in the fridge. You can slice it and heat it up in the microwave for a quick snack or a, something on the go. Um, you can make it up, do everything I'm going to do short of putting it in the oven, cover it and put it in the fridge the day before. So you get home from work, you set the oven to 400, you pop that in for 25 minutes, you got dinner. So, and then once you've done this, get creative. Um, I made another one because I'm sending, I have to send lunch back to the studio. And the other one is with Kalamata olives and mushrooms. And instead of the yellow mustard, I use Dijon mustard. So it's a little bit, a little bit different flavor. And I will find out from them how well it turned out. All right, so assembly. It's very easy. Now you can go bigger. I just did a pound of meat because, you know, for demonstration purposes. This pan will hold about two. So, get the meat just, see it's nice, it's chunky, it's not overworked, so you're going to get a good, good mouthful. Fresh onions, probably don't need all that I chopped. Olives, I made um, meatloaf at free meals last night and I always put olives in my meatloaf. And it must have turned out well because we cooked 10 pounds of meat which gave us like six big loaves. And nobody would leave until the last bit was eaten. The guests had seconds, they had carryouts. It's very gratifying when people enjoy your cooking like that. Pauline loves it, but I well this is this is sweet. Well that's sweet relish, why not? I was gonna use dill, but I think that disappeared. Um, Pauline, the first time I put olives in a meatloaf, she was just stunned. And uh, the other day she texted me and she said, What are we making for free meals this week? And I said, Meatloaf. She goes, With olives? I said, Well, is there any other way? So, I'm going to put some 
ketchup, you know, you can get creative here. You can use, depending on what flavor you want it to end up as, ranch dressing, barbecue sauce, white sauce, different mustards, different, it, all sorts of different things. This is adding, it's of course going to add flavor, but it's also going to add moisture. And you don't even have to mix this in because as it heats through, it heats through. So, oh, cheese. Got to have the cheese. Today I am using mozzarella and provolone. These are also great. It's great to do something like this. Keep this quick in the pantry anyway. You have to make something quick. You generally can pull enough ingredients out of the fridge to put a pie together if you have to make a quick meal. So I'll spread on like that. Now something I did last week when I made this, I did this by accident. I forgot to put the olives in. So I put them on top and when it baked, the olives kind of got a little, not crispy, but it was a different flavor because they were actually more exposed to the heat. So you saw I put some inside. So I'm putting the rest on top and then the batter will go over that. And then we will have all sorts of deliciousness. Is that looking good? All right. So I'm going to finish getting this together and I'm going to, you see, you know me and my onions. I love my onions. All right. Now, see, this is thickened up a bit just sitting there. I came across that quite by accident one time just by making it up ahead of time and discovering that it's thicker. And for this, it seems to work. I'm flicking onions. Um, this gives the crust a nice texture, fluffy. So I'm going to start in the middle, come out to the edge, and then start turning the pan. You want to make sure you get it around the edges. So this is going to form something of a crust and hold everything together. It's not a pure crust, you know, like if you actually made a crust on the bottom and such. It's just all going to bake together. And you can also season the batter if you want to. You could add herbs to Provence. You could add garlic, anything you want, really. Like I said, one of these days, I just have to come up with a sweet application to do this. And there we have it. I'm going to pop it in the oven until it gets nice and golden brown. Take the onions off the bottom first. So I'm going to have onions in my oven. Yeah, that's a hot, hot oven. All right, timer for 25 and start. And then I'll get this mess cleaned up and then we'll come back and talk about some more things that are going on and, and that's where we'll be. So back in the kitchen here at Treetop Lodge with me, I'm Connie. I will see you in a few and I'll have my mess cleaned up and we'll be ready for lunch. Join Meals on Wheels in the annual March for Meals to celebrate the seniors in our communities and the ways we can all support them. All across the country, communities will join together to take a stand for the millions of seniors struggling with hunger and isolation. So join the march. Celebrate March for Meals in your own way. March with us. Stay tuned for more of Connie's Kitchen. Yeah! Hey, monkey, that's my line. I say, stay tuned for more of Connie's Kitchen. Yeah! You made this vacation happen, cleverly merging promotions. Double points with every purchase. And cross-referencing travel sites. <laughs> Aloha! If you can ace your vacation, you can do it for retirement. Get on track with tips at aceyourretirement.org. I wanted to make up, hello, we're back. I wanted to make up a little something quick. It's kind of a sweet to go with the savory and staying with the, uh, the Bisquick theme. And I couldn't figure out what to do. And then Kyle, who you never see, but he's here, made a suggestion. And I thought it was a brilliant suggestion. I'm gonna make up some little, almost bite-sized pancakes and top them with some preserves and such as a little sweet bite after the pie. So I'm going to make about a half a batch past what the directions call for. Let's 
kit. Let's just throw some batter around the kitchen. Usually I do this so people think I'm in here working really hard, but I won't do that today. Okay, mix that up. I'm going to get my skillet hot. I'm using my wonderful new skillet that we got for our four, fourth anniversary in November because the other one just had kind of given up the ghost after a lot of hard duty. So... Now see, I use the recipe off the box for this and the pancake batter that you make up is a little bit thicker because, you know, you're making pancakes. The batter that we made for the pie is a little thinner because you want it to go in and coat and bake and such. Now, I'll warn you in advance, I will make a mess. Because <laughs> making pancakes for some reason, I just always do. Get a lot of air in there. Oh, Jack always does this. I guess that's effective. But when Jack has his cooking show, he can do things his way. All right, I'm going to get a little bit of water on my hand. I hear a sizzle. And we're going to... So while I'm starting this, I'll do my little spiel. I'm Connie Miller from Connie's Kitchen here at Treetop Lodge on OCTV, which is... AT&T channel 99 and Charter channel 191. I don't know why I had a metal block on that for so long. You can call me anytime at 248-933-4579. You can email me when I get my laptop back. <laughs> um, stormy3958 at att.net. You can visit our beautiful webpage and a lot of people have been visiting it lately, which is great because it means more and more people are finding us. And that's treetoplodgeoxford.com. And then there's always our Facebook page, which now that it's January, I'm going to start posting dates. I've got the wine dinner in February. Uh, I've got the shearing dates, which is the Monday and Tuesday after Mother's Day. And uh, we've got a lot of private groups coming up in January and February and March and April. we got the Tough Mudder. We're sold out in June. I mean, if you need a place, give me a call. I might be able to work something out. But at this point, it looks like we're completely booked out, which is great. And uh, we've even got stuff booked into the fall already, which is wonderful. All right, so my pancakes are starting to bubble on the top. But as you can see, I must have had a tilt in the pan because I've got one that's kind of a teardrop shape. So since I made these kind of thin, I don't want to let them sit too long. Let's see if I can get the flip. Ah, nice and golden brown. See, with this nice pan and with a lot of non-sticks, you don't have to put butter in the pan anymore. You can, but you don't have to. And... Uh, you know, if you're watching calories and watching your use of fats and such, that's not a bad idea. That's just another advantage to the nonstick pans. So I'm going to do the little plate of those, and then we're almost ready to take our pie out, and then we'll have some lunch. And then I'll start thinking about what I'm going to do next. I'm, again, I'm sorry I've been away for so long, but you know how it is in the holidays. I hope everyone had a good holiday. Spent your time with your friends and family, or... However you like to spend the holiday, whether it's with a lot of people or just quiet days. I had some quiet days. I had some great food. My husband did all the cooking. We had shrimp cargo. We had roasted duck that was insane. It was so good. The, the duck is kind of labor intensive because you have to poke the skin and boil it first to render off some of the fat. And then when you put it in the oven, you have to turn it a lot. The last time he made it, he kind of coated it with paprika, which I'm not really fond of. So this time he just used salt, sea salt, black pepper, and granulated garlic. And I posted a picture of that too. It was so good. The, the duck was juicy. It wasn't fatty. The skin was crispy. Oh. So, so I cook here. He cooks at home. <laughs> and especially he's pretty much taken over the holidays. So let me see. I'll flip a couple more of these. And then I'll do a little switcheroo with the pies. Oh, might have went this one a little bit more. Yeah, I have the feeling my burner is not sitting straight on there, but I'm not going to touch it right now because it's hot. So I'm just going to turn that off. And these are ready. Good little bite-sized pieces of heaven. See, these are just real simple because I didn't put anything in the batter other than batter. But then we'll put some... Yep, my burners are sitting uneven. 
that's no big deal. So now, spread them out on the plate. It can be like almost like little blintzes. You could roll them if you want, or you can just, oh, that smells like breakfast. I just pulled a couple of my favorite things out of the fridge. I've got some apricot preserves that don't want to come off of the spoon. <laughs> and some strawberry, strawberry rhubarb. Ah, back to the strawberries again. So you can just do it like this so it's a little pick up and bite size. Get some pecans on there. This would work. I've actually done this in a savory application too using cream cheese or creme fraiche. Um, ricotta, sour cream, herbs and such do the same kind of thing. So I'm going to do this and do this. Mm. Oh, so good. Kyle, what a great idea. Thank you so much for that. And then this one, you can roll to eat. And that's when it looks like a little blintz. So I'll finish those up. Because right now, I'm going to do this. Well, that was quick and fun. You know, like last minute, oh my goodness, what do I have for dessert or something? And I didn't. But my wizard, he came up with the idea. Everyone should have a wizard. Oh, I got a drone for Christmas. I think it is the funniest thing in the world because you know how tech challenged I am. So as I opened it, my husband explained the whole thing. He said, so I think you and Kyle will have a really good time with this. And I said, yes, we will. So as soon as the weather's right for it, we're going to bring it up here and start doing some shooting and that. So we'll incorporate it in the show. And we'll have drone footage at the lodge. It even, I think the thing that got me the most was when he was telling me about it. He said, you can even sync it up to your smartphone. Well, I now have a smartphone, not through choice. And uh, I can make and receive calls and texts. And I can now post pictures. And that's about all I can do. So I'm going to do a little switcheroo here due to timing. This was the pie I made a little earlier, so it's still hot. The other one is still in the oven, and I've got, let's take a look at it. Oh, look how pretty that is. It's about five more minutes, and then the browning will be complete, and it will look more like this one. But I also like to, when I make these, let them sit for a few minutes, because then they kind of sit up, and they're not so messy. So, let's see if I can slice a piece out of there. Oh, that smells good. Mm. And again, this is dealer's choice. If you don't like Kalamata olives or even regular olives, don't use them. If you like black olives, use them. It's just putting everything together in the shell. I've done this with, with like shredded chicken. Excuse me, I think I have a hair in my face. Um, like a barbecue type pie. It's just whatever you want to put in the shell. It's entirely up to you. One thing I have not mastered is getting the first piece out neat and tidy. We shall see, but that's okay too. I actually had a friend up here helping me with a luncheon a few weeks ago, and I made some, I made pies. Don't remember now, I think they were chicken and broccoli. And I just kind of set them in front of him and he did the slicing and every piece came out perfect. He said that's because I cooked them so well. I said that's because he sliced them so well. So that's pretty darn good. It smells good. So while I indulge in a little bit of lunch here, I'm going to say thank you so much for coming back. I've missed you, and I've heard from you. I hear from all over the state now from all our affiliates, which is wonderful. And thanks for coming back to the kitchen and sharing your recipes and your ideas and coming to visit. I love it. So until we meet again, I will say thank you for coming back to the kitchen. Remember the promise. Have a wonderful day. Spend some time in your kitchen with your friends and your family and have a good time and enjoy. <laughs>